So we've got a new tool for the woodworking shop. It's a 30 watt laser engraver. Before we can get it open, put it together and test it out, we've got to create something to engrave on. And I've got just the perfect project.
All right, so hopefully you picked up by now the project that we're gonna be using the laser engraver for is a handmade wooden cherry bench top for our two toolboxes here. The whole point of this is to take two separate toolboxes and create one solid counter uh, for both of them. And we're gonna use the laser engraver here to do something pretty cool. I'm not gonna tell you what it is just yet, but uh, I've never used a laser engraver before, so I got Kyle to drive eight hours from Indiana here from Spicer Designs uh, to give us a hand because that's pretty much what his, not your entire channel, but a good portion of your channel is related to CAD and CNC and laser engraving and yeah. kind of that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, but we're gonna go ahead and get that table pulled off of there now that we know it fits, get it on the laser engraver and we'll show you what we're putting on there. It's gonna turn out pretty cool. All right, so we got the bench top moved over here. We've got the laser engraver set up. This is a longer B1 30 watt diode laser. Um, and you can see setup is pretty easy. Once it's assembled, all you have to do is plug in your power, plug in the air assist, which this comes standard with air assist. Explain real quick what air assist is and why it, it's better than no air assist. The air assist, in my opinion, it just kind of helps the laser engraver run more efficiently especially if you're cutting through material, it kind of helps blow that material through. In some cases, it'll help keep the material cooler. So it's just, it makes it run more efficiently. And does it make cleaner cuts too? Is that it, it does. A lot of times it'll take out some of the burning marks that you'll get along cuts or engraving. It'll help with those, those burn marks. It'll yep. just give it a cleaner, more crisp cut. So aside from power and the air assist, then really the, only, the third connection you need is to a laptop to run uh, whatever software you're running, but you said that Lightburn is the yeah. most common software for running this. And he was giving me a quick tutorial on it yesterday. It seems very intimidating, but once you actually get into it, it's really not. You can it's like import just about any image you want, click a, a trace tool, and it will take the image you put in there, trace it out, and then really at that point, all you have to do is set your power setting and your speed setting for how quickly you want the laser to travel around. And that's it. There's two settings and a trace button is yeah, from, from what I got from it. Yeah. And the one thing I really like about these desktop lasers is that you could be a beginner or you can be an expert, whatever level you're at, they're fairly easy to use. I mean, you can do a really basic design, do really basic settings on a common material, or you can take it to an expert level where, I mean, you are getting into every little intricate detail on your cut speeds and your power output and different materials. So they're really well-rounded tool to have for any level. Yeah. Now I did mention this is a 30 watt diode laser engraver. Um, and we were talking, Kyle, you have a five watt and a 10 watt laser engraver. Yeah. And we did a couple uh, sample test runs last night just to make sure that everything was working properly and figuring out for this type of wood, we took some scrap cherry to test on to figure out what our power level needed to be, what our um, speed, trace speed needed to be. And you were talking about how much more powerful this 30 watt laser is than your yeah. five and 10 watts. Yeah, so originally I got a five watt laser and you know it does okay for light duty stuff. And then I got the 10 watt, which was significantly better. I mean, it was double the power. Right. But I was amazed by how much power this 30 watt has. It, makes engraving and projects go so much faster when you have that much more power. I think we were running it at like 60% power and it was carving in what, like a, a 16th of an inch yeah, or it was, it was about three sixteenths or so. It was, it was almost an eighth of an inch Yeah, in, into hardwood too. Yeah. This is, this is cherry. This is thick stuff here. Um, so is there anything else about this specific unit that you think we should mention before we get started with what we're going to engrave on our bench top here? Maybe just the cut dimensions, how, how big you can actually cut with this particular laser. Yeah, so that was the other thing you mentioned compared to your five watt and 10 watt laser engraver is that this one is significantly larger. I think the cut area is roughly about 17 and a half by 17 and a half inches, um, which is perfect for doing this bench top. You can see whatever it is that we're gonna cut in here, it's gonna fill out this bench top nicely and we're gonna put one on this side and one on this side as well, so. And it's nice about these lasers too is when you have a large project like this, you can literally just take this laser 
and set it on top of it and just engraving it. Yeah. So, so it doesn't the piece doesn't have to fit the dimensions. You know, you could literally set it on top. Yeah. All right. Well, I think that covers the longer 30 watt diode laser engraver. We're going to go ahead and get it running and show you what it can do. All right. So we're going to give you a quick, very quick, brief tutorial of what this software looks like, just to give some idea of what you're getting into if you want to get one of these lasers engravers. But Kyle, I'll go ahead and let you take it away. Explain just how simple it is. So without getting into a bunch of detail, this is the basic Lightburn software. This is the typical layout. All we're going to do is import an image and it could be any image. It could be an image off of your phone. It could be an image off of the computer. You're just going to upload it. And then from here, all it comes down to is sizing it. And those are all details that you can work out with whatever project you're doing. Uh, other than that, we're just going to right click that image. We're going to come down and hit trace image. Then you can adjust the clarity of it. We're going to hit OK. And then you can see right there, it converted that image into a bitmap that the software can actually recognize and create a code for so that the engraver can now engrave. Other than this, all you need to do is mess with the power settings and a couple other little things. You want to show them where the power settings are, how you would adjust that? Yeah, so there's multiple layers that you can create, which we won't get into those details, but you can see up here, we have this blue layer. And right now we are set to line, which means that anywhere where there's a line, it's only going to engrave that line. And our power settings right now are set right here. So we have 10 inches per minute and we have the power maxed out at 100%. So that is set up to cut. This would be if we were cutting material. Otherwise, we would change those settings to a higher speed and a lower power if we want to do engraving. Okay. All right, so one last thing before we get started, we've got to set the depth of the laser head. And there's a little kickstand on here that is basically a depth gauge and a little thumb screw. So as you loosen that, you go ahead and set it down so the kickstand is setting right on top of the surface you're going to be engraving. Tighten the thumb screw and then kick the kickstand back up so that way the laser head can float freely. the finished product or almost finished product we've got two coats of poly on here I'm gonna put at least two or three more on and this is what I love about woodworking is I can take something that looks like this and turn it into something that looks like this something that's gonna be useful here in the shop I know some people are gonna ask what is you know did we get some oily hands on here or something that's actually just some residual weathering uh, that we didn't plane all the way through and I kind of left that there on purpose just to give it some more character uh, Kyle and I were actually playing with some other things that you can do with these laser engravers. Kyle, I'll let you talk about the different materials we tested out with that 30 watt laser. So right here we got some mild steel, these three. This one and this one are both powder coated and the laser burns through that powder coating really nice and makes a really clean engraving. 
This is hot rolled mild steel, so this is that actual mill scale coating. It's not as great on this, but it will burn through it and you'll get some results. And that's basically etching it, right? It's pretty much etching it, yeah. I mean, it's, it's really hard to get through that mill scale. And my lasers struggle, and yours did so much better. And this was only like five or six minutes to make these small engravings. That's something else we should talk about. So I think our logo over here took, what, two hours to do? It was an hour 45, I think. Hour and 45 for that. This was only 45 minutes, and this was like 15 minutes. So... Um, you know, it's kind of nice. I mean, you do have to, you can't just leave it because it is burning into yeah. a flammable product wood. So it could catch fire. I do believe they have a, a fire sensor on there that it will shut off if it senses that something has caught fire, but it's definitely not something you want to leave and walk away from. You want to be out here kind of babysitting it a little bit, you but do. anyway, back to what we were cutting out here. So these two are aluminum. This is like an anodized aluminum, and this is probably the cleanest looking engraving that you're gonna get on aluminum is when it's anodized. Uh, this looks perfect. And this is just straight aluminum, and it literally did nothing to this. I don't know why, but I tried it two times, nothing. And you tried it with like the power setting all the way up. And... I did, I, I jacked it all the way up, I slowed the speed down, and I mean, I could look at that as hard as I can, and I can't see any mark on it. So I was pretty disappointed with this one. Yeah. And, and then this was uh, some oak that we did just some test cuts on. And you can see we actually burned through about five eighths of red oak. Uh, that's how powerful that laser is. You can see the charring on the outside there, cut all the way through. Um, pretty deep engraving on that as well. We had the power setting up and the uh, travel speed down on that. And then not only all these different types of metals, uh, but this is also leather. You can also cut out metal or cut out leather. You can engrave leather. And this is just the tip of the iceberg on what you can do. I mean, the possibilities are limitless with this engraver. Uh, it just comes down to how creative are you and what can you come up with that you want to engrave on. All right. So as we talked about earlier, Kyle has a five watt and a 10 watt laser. And I figured it would be beneficial to you guys to place them side by side just so you could see the size difference in the frames, the difference in the size of the five watt laser versus the 10 or the 30 watt laser, just because on any website, you're never actually gonna get to see these in real life side by side. So if you are interested in shopping for one of these, this just gives you some perspective on what you might want, what you might need. Now, Adam, I gotta ask you, this isn't obviously in your wheelhouse here. And I know you mentioned it was a little bit intimidating because it's not something that you've worked with. Um, how do you think that you're going to work this into your channel and, and how do you feel now about it after we've done some work with it? Yeah, so we've gotten over the years uh, probably a dozen laser engraver offers um, to come and demo them on the channel. And I've always had interest in it, but it was also something that I was intimidated by. And then as I started to get to know Kyle and everything, and we were started talking and I was like, hey, uh, I'm really interested in doing one of these. Would you have interest in coming out here and walking me through, getting me set up, all that stuff, because it, it is kind of intimidating. And it's not necessarily the laser engraver, it's the software, learning the software, mm -hmm. and having you come out here and show me how to kind of handhold me through getting set up and, and everything. And now I feel very comfortable in it. Um, but that's the one nice thing is, you know, Kyle's not gonna go out and show everybody, you know, in person how to set up the software and do all that but you have a lot of that good information on your YouTube channel, Spicer Designs. Yeah, and my channel is not dedicated to laser engravers, but I do have a handful of videos where I give kind of a step-by-step -step tutorial on how to use the software and how to actually use the engravers and all the setup process. So if you are interested in something like this, you'll definitely get a lot of information from those videos. But I do want to be clear, if you check out my channel, I tend to use a little foul language here and there. I do bleep it out. And occasionally I'll have my wife in the videos showing off some of her features. Subscribe. So if you are more of a sensitive viewer or you're easily offended, which is perfectly fine, my channel may not be for you, but I do my best to provide good information and I try to keep things somewhat entertaining. And it's fun and funny. I, I it's, sort of... more, it's more about the humor and having fun. So yeah, this video was not meant to get too deep down into the weeds on the programming and all that. It was just to kind of pique your interest on what these things are capable of. Maybe spark some interest in these machines. Uh, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I know I'm certainly going to enjoy this new bench top. Thank you, Kyle, for stopping out here and getting me definitely addicted to laser engraving. I can't wait to see what my next project is. If any of you guys have any suggestions, leave them down in the comments below if you have any good ideas for a laser engraving project that we could do a video on. I hope to hear from you. If you enjoyed this one, give me a big thumbs up, click that subscribe button, and we'll catch you on the next one. Thanks for watching.